very Merry Christmas to all of you. I forgot to tell the deacon to read the short version of the gospel today. <laughs> and, but now actually it was very nice to hear the genealogy. We only get to hear that once a year. And, but he did mispronounce one name, so I have to have him come up and do the whole thing again. <laughs> the, at the children's Sunday school, the teacher encouraged the five-year-olds to draw a picture of something from the Bible. As she wandered around the room looking at the picture, she came to little Alice. She said, Alice, what are you drawing? Alice said, I'm drawing God. But the teacher said, no one knows what God looks like. And without missing a beat, Alice replied, they will when I'm finished. <laughs> well, thanks to Christmas, we know what God looks like. God looks like a little baby. When you look at the Son of God lying in the manger, you see how much God loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that those who believe in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So we now know what God looks like, because God became a baby. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The invisible God became visible. And Jesus would grow up to die on the cross for each one of us. As the scripture says, that those who believe in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. And then Jesus was raised from the dead for each one of us. That is the heart of the gospel story, the incarnation, how God became a baby so that he could grow up and die for each one of us, that God willing, we will live forever for all eternity in the kingdom of heaven. The other story I like a lot on Christmas is about the very religious couple who toured the Holy Land during the Christmas season and decided it'd be very meaningful if they could spend Christmas Eve in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus. Arriving there, they searched high and low for a room, but none was available at any price. Finally, they pulled up in front of the Sheraton and the husband got out of the car and told his wife and young child, stay here, let me go in and see if I can find something for us. He approached the desk and the clerk told him there was no more rooms. Sorry, sir, it's Christmas Eve. It's our busiest time. No matter how much the man offered to pay, the clerk said he had nothing. Finally, the man told the clerk, I bet if I told you that my name was Joseph and the woman waiting in the car was Mary and that she had a newborn infant, you'd find us a room. Well, stammered the clerk, I suppose I would. Okay, said the man, I guarantee you, they're not coming tonight, we'll take their room. <laughs> the question for tonight to ponder is, do we make room for Christ in our life? Do we make room every day for prayer? Do we make sure that we spend at least 10, 15 minutes every day in prayer, talking to our Lord? Do we make room for Jesus by reading the Bible every day for five or 10 minutes? Do we make room for Jesus by praying the rosary. Hopefully we pray the rosary every day for peace in the world. Do we make room in our hearts for Jesus by coming to mass every Sunday and Holy Day? Do we make room for Jesus by going to confession once a month? Those are the questions to ponder. Uh, Bishop Sheen once said that when all the verses of the world are written down, the saddest verse will be, and there was no room at the end. So let's make sure that the room of our hearts is open every day to allow Jesus to spend time within our hearts through daily prayer, through Sunday Mass, and through regular confession. So make room every day for Jesus in your life. I'll just end by reading this children's book. I grew up in the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly shove, as they say. And the priest would read this book every year. Santa Bethlehem, his sister, wrote it. His sister was a nun. So let me just end by reading this beautiful children's story about Santa Bethlehem. And really, this is the origin of the kneeling Santa. You might have seen that beautiful statue of Santa kneeling at Jesus' crib. The night before Christmas, a beautiful night. The air was so crisp and the stars were so bright. And down by the lake, you could still hear the ringing of laughter and sleigh bells and young people singing. In one little house on this wonderful eve, the children were guessing what Santa would leave. They hung up their stockings with big little eyes. 
that shone with delight and the hope of surprise. And then mother darkened the living room light, for this was the loveliest part of the night when all the children would gather to sing, happy birthday to you, our new little king. But a shadow of sadness enveloped their joy. There were tears in the eyes of one little boy. He turned to his mother and let out a cry. Mom, the angels were there and the shepherds came by. The way was so clear and the star was so bright. Didn't Santa Claus stop at the stable that night? The mother was stunned. There wasn't a stir. The five little children were looking at her. They wanted to know what the answer would be. What could she tell them? How could they see? And then she looked at the stable, the infant so sweet, and she looked at the mother who knelt at his feet. The baby was love, the joy of the living, and Mary, the essence of sharing and giving. And there was the answer to counter her fear. What seemed inconsistent became very clear. For when before Christ was there ever a cause for any poor soul to expect Santa Claus? Yes, the infant was love and the joy of the living, and Mary, her baby, was sharing and giving, and Santa was there, a gift from above, invisible symbol of giving and love. There was joy in her heart as she wiped off her tear, and her words overflowed with a genuine cheer, for now she was sure that her answer was right. Of course Santa came to the stable that night, and oh, with what joy did the children receive the story she told of the first Christmas Eve. It was the night before Christmas a long time ago, away to the north in the land of the snow, a toy maker ended his work for the day and went to his snow port to check on his sleigh. He fed all the deer in the reindeer corral and whispered, I think I am finished for now. As Santa went home and got ready for bed, he fingered his beard and he quietly said, the world is so silent, the wind is so light, a feeling of wonder is filling this night. Now back at the toy shop, the hardworking elves were busy arranging the toys on the shelves, and one little elf with a gleam in his eyes revealed to the others a lovely surprise. I asked Santa who were the girls and the boys for whom he had made all these beautiful toys, and Santa replied as he stood there and smiled, I made all these toys for one little child. When darkness had fallen and Santa slept sound and only the small little elves were around, the toys in the workshop came down from the shelves and had the most wonderful time for themselves. And as they were frolicking late in the night, they suddenly noticed a beautiful light. And then they recalled with excitement and joy what Santa Claus said when he finished each toy. I fashioned you into a wonderful thing for someday you will be my gift. For a king. When Santa Claus saw the remarkable light, he knew that tonight was that glorious night. At last, after all the years he had waited, the infant was born as the Bible had stated. So quickly he called every helper and aid to pack all the toys he had carefully made. The clowns and the balls and the musical trains, the rockets and boats and the passenger planes, the puzzles and crayons and coloring sets, a bike and a wagon and little toy pets. He bundled them up to the top of the sleigh and led by the star, he began on his way. The night before Christmas, a beautiful night. The air was so crisp and the star was so bright. Quiet and calm over Bethlehem lay. Silence replaced the noise of the day. High on the hillside, the angels were singing of peace and of love that the Christ child was bringing. And there in the manger, the infant was sleeping, and Mary and Joseph a vigil were keeping, a vigil of love, adoration, and prayer for Jesus, whom God had placed in their care. And late in the night, by the light from above, Santa Claus came with a heart full of love. He gazed at the infant, the dear little Lord, and kneeling, he silently prayed and adored. Then Santa arose, and without any noise, he gave to Our Lady all the wonderful toys. He set them in front of her one after one and told them he had made them all for her son. And they say, when Our Lady beheld the surprise, she whispered to Santa with tears in her eyes, I thank you for what you have given my son. Your present is truly a wonderful one, but this above all is the most beautiful part, the love that is fostered for him in your heart. But you know that my son will be like other boys. He couldn't possibly use all of these toys. 
So each Christmas Eve, as if by the star, I'd like you to travel both near and afar to visit all children as jingle bells ring in honor of Jesus, their new little king, and spread all the love and the joy of the giving so others may share in the joy of the living. And oh, Santa, take all these wonderful toys and give them with love to the girls and the boys, for that which you do for some other one is counted as if it were done for my son. Then sweetly she patted the toys with her hand and picked for her baby a little white lamb. <laughs> 